Moby Dick ends with this sentence. As it happens, this is the first time and last in the entire book the word orphan appears. Such words that appear only once in a corpus are called hapax legomena. Words that appear exactly twice are called dislegomena, and so on. Now, imagine you don't see the exact text of the book and you only know two things, the total number of words and the amount of distinct words or types. Is it possible to predict the number of hapaxes you have and generally the number of n legomena for all n? For example, the last chapter of Moby Dick contains 257 words in total but only 160 pairwise distinct words, or types, as we should call them, because the repeats 24 times, and repeats 9 times, and so on. So, if you never saw the exact text, but only had these numbers, could you predict the number of legomena for every n? Well, this is exactly what we attempt in this video, and the law, which we derive from first principles, will surprise you with its accuracy on a multitude of texts. This is a novel result in mathematics of linguistics. Here is the approach we take. Given a text of word length m and number of types n, let us randomly choose m words from it. What is the expected number of types, i.e. distinct words, that we will find in this sample? Harold Stanley Heaps considered this same question about 50 years ago, and he arrived to this formula. It seems to work well on some texts, but it also does terribly on a variety of corpuses, because there is no way to determine optimal coefficients other than fitting them to your data. So how can we do it rigorously? Let's begin with a simplified problem. Consider a corpus where every word repeats the same number of times. Here, for instance, three types repeat two times each. If we randomly pick one word at a time, a recursive relationship comes up. Expected number of types for m plus 1 picked words is whatever we got in a previous stage plus two possible outcomes. Either we pick a new type or we don't, which simplifies to this. If we got y types after picking m tokens, there are kn minus m tokens left, and k minus y of which are of type not yet drawn. Using the basic definition of probability, we can write and thus. So, this is what our recursion looks like now. How good is it in practice? A deck of cards is a perfect example of a uniform corpus where types are dual. You can consider suits or valors. So we can yield two different distributions. If we run 1000 trials of picking cards at random, this is how many tokens we will observe. And this is what our formulas predict. Not bad, right? But what about an explicit expression? Calculus comes to rescue. Rearranging and treating m as an independent variable, we can produce this fraction, which should remind you of derivatives. Indeed, this fraction is approximately a derivative of e with respect to m. Forgetting about precision for a moment, we can solve this differential equation by splitting the variables, integrating and simplifying. 
there is an obvious boundary condition we can use to get the constant. Finally, we derive an explicit formula for a corpus with uniform type token distribution. As expected, it gives a smoother solution to our card sampling example. But how can we study general, non-uniform texts? Observe that any text is simply a mix of texts with uniform type token distribution. Put all hapexes in one group, dislegomena to another, and so on. Label these types as k0, k1, and so on. In other words, a general text is a mix of MKN, KN subtexts. Sampling M tokens at random, we expect NKN over M times M tokens from the nth group. And we already know how many types we expect to find from our previous derivation. Thus, for the general text, we need to add all expected values together. All types add up to n. Finally, this is our general function derived from first principles. We can parametrize with the proportion of the whole text which we sample. Remember how we promised to predict the structure of random text samples? Well, if we can somehow model kn for the whole text, how could e of x help us determine the number of n legomena? Sampling a proportion x of the whole text should naturally give us a proportion x of all hapexes in our sample. But if we only got one instance of a particular dislegomena, it will also become a hapex for our sample. And this gives additional 2k2x1 minus x hapexes. The same goes for other n legomena. We don't want to spend our time on details here, but observe that there is a hint for differentiation here. Indeed, if you take our general formula and differentiate with respect to x, you can see that it becomes a factor of a corresponding term in our series, and the extra multiplier is easy to guess. You can always consult the original paper for details. Now it is time for demonstration. If we take the whole of Moby Dick and rank words according to their frequency in the entire text, we will obtain this neat distribution. It is easy to observe that the second most common word has half the frequency of the most frequent word. The third most common word has roughly a third and so on. This pattern is described by Zipf's law, which states that similar distributions are found within any ranked data like the land areas of countries, wealth distribution amongst individuals, and many other. However, we see that 1 over n rule breaks down when we look at least frequent types. This is expected because in a text, types take discrete values, unlike land area or wealth. But another pattern can be identified here. Hapexes account for almost a half of all types. This legomena take up roughly a sixth of all types, and so on. A corpus which obeys these two laws exactly is said to have a perfect Zipfian distribution. Unfortunately, we can't expect this property from all real texts. The general formula we derived works best on perfect Zipfian corpuses. But to make it perform well in all other cases, 
we need to pretend as if it is perfectly Zipfian. Given a particular text, we can measure how Zipfian it is and then we either make it smaller or larger, up to a point when it is perfectly Zipfian. Finding the correct size will also yield the theoretically optimal number of types by using this boundary condition. As for our definition of a perfect zip distribution, we model the expected number of types as this. Plugging this into our general formula gets us a new expression which now only depends on x, the proportion of sampled text. Using calculus again, we can show that it converges to a neat function. And now we recall our relationship between e of x and expected number of n legomena that finally give us all the answers. For instance, King James Bible is a corpus with over 1 million words and almost 14,000 types. Direct observation tells us that 32% of all words are hapexes which is below the 50% we need in a perfectly Zipfian corpus. In this case, we pretend the Bible is smaller, and after using all our formulas, we arrived at this tailored expression. Look at how accurately it predicts the real type token distribution of the Bible, or any random sample of it. The same goes for any other book you can think of. This video is based off a paper which contains all the rigor you need. But we hope you feel surprised by this discovery anyway. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments below.